Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss what is regularization in machine learning. Also, I will discuss different regularization techniques like lasso, ridge and elastic net in machine learning with a simple example. While developing a machine learning model, many a times we encounter a situation in which the training accuracy of the model is very high, but the validation or the testing accuracy is too low. Let us assume that we have been given a data set D. Usually what we do is we divide that particular data set into three groups that is training, validation and testing set. Let us assume that the model whatever we have built that is working perfectly fine on the training data but it is working poorly on validation or the testing data. Such a situation is known as overfitting in machine learning domain. Now we formally define what is uh, overfitting here. Overfitting is a phenomena that occurs when machine learning model is constrained to the training set. That is nothing but uh, the model is working fine on the training set, but not on the testing or the validation data. It's also known as unseen data here. This kind of situation occurs uh, in machine learning because uh, the model learns the noise in the training data as well as the model memorizes the training data instead of learning the patterns within that particular training data. The same thing it tries to replicate on the testing data because the testing data is unseen data it may not work properly on the testing data over here. Now we will define what is underfitting. Underfitting model is unable to perform well on the training data also. The meaning of this one is the model which doesn't works well on the training data that is called as the underfitting model. If it is not working well on the training data, we cannot expect it to perform well on the validation or the testing data here. In this case, uh, we need to uh, increase the complexity of the model or we need to add uh, more features to the feature set so that uh, the model performs well on the training data. If it starts uh, working well on the training data, then we concentrate on the other side that is uh, whether it works fine or not on the validation or the testing data over here. These are some of the examples for the underfitting, overfitting and the appropriate fitting here. If you look at this particular first one, this particular model is uh, performing very poor on the training data. Because of that, it is called as underfitting. It is too simplistic model. Many of the examples were classified or you can say that incorrectly classified over here. So that's the reason it is called as the underfitting here. When you consider this particular model, this particular model has learned too much in this case. It, it, it has uh, very, you can say that the sharp edges or you can say that the hyperplane. Because of that, uh, you can say that it is a overfitting situation. It is trying to memorize the training data rather than learning from this particular training data over here. When it comes to this particular example, in this case, the model has learned a bit. Uh, there are few misclassifications are there, but it is, you can say that the appropriate fitting for the given training data over here. Now we will define two more very important terms. One is called as bias, another one is called as variance here. Bias refers to the errors when we try to fit a statistical model on the real world data, which does not fit perfectly well on some of the mathematical models here. Let us say that we have chosen a very simplistic model to fit the given training data. Many a times what happens is uh, the model is unable to learn from the patterns in the given data, hence perform poorly on that particular data. Such a situation is known as the high bias here. That is nothing but whenever we have chosen a very simplistic model, it may not perform well on, we can say that the training data, such a situation is known as the high bias over here. The second one is variance. Variance implies that the error value that occurs when we try to make predictions by using data that is not previously seen by the model. That is nothing but the variance implies to the uh, testing data or you can say that the validation data because testing and validation data is unseen data over here. There is a situation known as high variance that is the model is not performing well on the testing or you can say that the validation data because the model has learned noise in the data over here. These are the two examples for high bias and the high variance here. 
in the first case we have chosen a very simplistic model that is nothing but the linear regression in this particular case many of the examples were not fitted properly here so definitely we will get maximum error on the training data such a situation is called as underfitting as well as high bias over here when it comes to second one the model is trying to learn too much from the training data because of that such a situation is known as overfitting here it's also known as high variance over here finding a proper balance between these two that is high bias and high variance is also known as bias variance trade off that is the very important part of machine learning model here now we will discuss what is actually regularization in machine learning and what are the different techniques to achieve regularization in machine learning regularization is a technique used to reduce the errors by fitting the function appropriately on the training set and avoiding the overfitting over here so what we do here is uh, we will try to fit our model on the training set appropriately in such a way that we avoid overfitting in this particular case so there are mainly three regularization techniques are available one is known as lasso regularization also known as l1 regularization second one is known as ridge regularization also known as l2 regularization third one is known as elastic re net regularization also known as l1 and l2 regularization in this case first we will try to understand the lasso regularization here lasso regression is a regression model which uses l1 regularization technique which is known as least absolute shrinkage and selection operator regression in this case uh, we add absolute value of magnitude as a coefficient of a penalty term to the loss function whenever we build any regression model uh, we will get the error term that error term is also known as the loss function in regression terms so what we do in this uh, lasso regression is we add absolute value of magnitude as the penalty to this particular loss function so that we can reduce that particular loss on the training side as well as we can say that on the testing side over here this particular lasso regression also helps us to achieve the feature selection by penalizing the weights to approximately equal to 0 if that particular feature is not at all important for that particular model the lasso regression's loss function looks something like this this first term is actually the loss function of a regression model to this particular loss function we are adding absolute value here so in this particular case uh, m is the number of features here n is the number of uh, examples given to us yi is the actual or you can say that the target value yi cap or you can say that yi hat is the predicted target value in this particular case to this particular loss value we are adding this particular we can say that the penalty term so that we can reduce the error over here the second one is known as ridge regression ridge regression uses something called as l2 regularization technique ridge regression adds squared magnitude rather than adding absolute magnitude to the coefficient function as a penalty here so it looks something like this this is the original loss function to this particular thing we are adding the squared magnitude over here coming back to the last one that is elastic uh, net regression elastic net regression is the combination of both l1 as well as l2 regularization uh, we add uh, these two l1 and l2 proportionately with the help of another hyperparameter you can say that alpha over here the cost function looks something like this this is the original cost function to this particular thing we are adding the first one is uh, you can say that absolute weight here and this is the a uh, squared magnitude or the weight here and we have added one more hyperparameter in this case that is 1 minus alpha and here we have added alpha here so alpha can be any value in the range of uh, 0 to 1 if alpha is equal to 0 we have something called as the lasso regression if alpha is equal to 1 we have something called as the ridge regression here if the alpha value is anything in the range of 0 to 1 it is known as elastic ridge regression over here i hope the concept is clear If you like the video do like and share with your friends press the subscribe button for more videos press the bell icon for regular updates thank you for watching